John in London, hello, December 31st, 2009, end of the year, end of a decade. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance of addiction, alcohol, my behaviour could be as addictive as well. Work, relationships, collecting, materialism, you name it, to try and fill a gap inside and I never knew what that gap was. What is the gap for, that feeling of emptiness? Well, it's to put good things into, rather than things which take the edge off, maybe. And I used alcohol to take the edge off, because I found out very early on in my life that it made me feel joyful, convivial, sleepy, relaxed, happy, sad. It let me access my feelings beyond the one which seemed to be dominant all the time. And that was fear of life fear of things going wrong, fear of not being good enough, fear of being less than other people. And now I know there is a good gap inside, it's there for a reason, it's to keep on learning how to be me. And if I look back at the last decade and the last year, it's all been about learning life on a daily basis. And we all learn life on a daily basis, either we're reinforcing the way we've always been. And for me that would be to return to drinking uh, in the ism, alcoholism, or workaholism, or relationship isms, or collecting isms, or materialism, all those things. And I prefer not to. I can make a choice not to on a daily basis and to fill my life with living in the moment and understanding more about what is going on. So facing reality as it is and hoping uh, through experience, strength and hope from, uh, from what I learned from, from being here and from others how to make or live life as it is. So, ten years, you know, lots happened. Started this decade, 2000, the millennium, with a feeling that uh, the world might collapse because of the computer glitches and all the rest of it. And fearing what to do next, not having a clue. And driven by drink and the need to feel right. It was always there. So striving for perfection at the beginning of the decade and striving to be on the road of happy destiny. And the happy destiny bit can be happy or sad. So what have I learned in these last few years, and especially this year? Well, number one, I'm a human being. I have every possible fault and asset or asset and liability and I just try and keep sober one day at a time so the rest of my life can work and it's been a long journey and along the way family, friends, community have helped and supported me and kept me alive long enough to find a miracle really and you know I don't want to underplay it or overplay it but to be out of addiction into recovery is a miracle because addiction drives us forever to fill that emptiness inside with whatever it is we're addicted to so less so to alcohol yeah been a bit sober for a while workaholism relationship isms and all of that and the materialism well they can manifest from time to time and get out of balance and that can happen in the daily situ situation but the gift these days is I know what's going on. I'm not driving myself to be right and I'm not driving my willpower or driving my life through willpower. I'm absolutely in the moment, hopefully, most of the time. Neither in the past nor the present, uh, no, neither in the past nor the future, but making the best of what is going on now. And what helps me? Friends, fa well, family, friends, community, and a fellowship, and that fellowship is AA. And I've been sharing about AA for a long time, uh, either on YouTube or in other places, about how it helps me, Alcoholics Anonymous, to keep sober one day at a time. So I'm, I guess I feel very, very fortunate that life circumstances gave me the opportunity to accept my powerlessness over my addiction, and that life was unmanageable if I went back to it, and to find a new life. So for me, AA has provided the means to stay sober. And if I stay sober, the rest of life can be as it is in the moment. So what is AA? 
I will share the AA preamble or statement of intent because it slows me down and it's so critical to my recovery. And there are other ways, but AA works for me and I'm, I'm gifted with fellowship. So AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And for me, the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And primary purpose is to stay sober and help others to achieve sobriety. And sometimes it's very difficult to help others to achieve sobriety because all of us need that little moment of clarity where we realize that maybe we cannot get out of this predicament of the ism on our own. And that moment of clarity for me was some years back, but then it was a hard road. And as is often said, life is difficult. It's difficult if we're having a happy time because we're learning how to be happy. And it's also difficult because we may be having a sad time or really hard times. And we're learning how to deal with that too. So as one archbishop said, you know, the, uh, the journey of life, the spiritual journey, what is it? And he said it's the ability to cope. So for me it's about coping on a daily basis. And if I can't get to a meeting of AA, although I go to many, as many as I can, because it's not only fellowship, it's friendship. And it, it helps me learn how to love people, be loved back, and be useful. And when I can't get there, I share literature like this, or read it, daily reflections. And this is all about the 12 steps, and it, it's, it's covered all the steps, one a month, in a way which is understandable and is illustrated from what other people have learned over the years. So for December 31st it says this, Daily Resolutions. The idea of 24-hour living applies primarily to the emotional life of the individual. That's how we're feeling on a daily basis. Emotionally speaking, we must not live in yesterday, nor in tomorrow. And the whole program is about understanding our feelings. We don't control our feelings, they're there. Our feelings are insiders, always, I feel. And then we think them away, or suppress them, or actually acknowledge them, and make better choices based on what we're feeling. That doesn't mean we go to outrageous extremes, but we go to the possibilities of what can and cannot be done. And it goes on to say, a new year, 12 months, 52 weeks, 365 days, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes, a time to consider directions, goals and actions. I must make some plans to live a normal life, but also I must live emotionally within a 24-hour frame. For if, I do, for if I do, I don't have to make New Year's resolutions. In other words, it's another day. I can make every day a New Year's Day. I can decide, today I will do this, today I will do that. Each day I can measure my life by trying to do a little better, by deciding to follow God or good conscience will, and by making an effort to put the principles of our AA program into action. And for me, it's always about action. So, year end, 12 steps, 12 traditions, 12 useful tools which need to be put into practice understanding my emotions on a daily basis and making some life plans maybe a little bit longer than the day but not to live in the future but to have plans laid down to be useful to love people and be loved back what more can I ask so to the serenity to God the serenity prayer or to good conscience as is your choice being unique and authentic, we are. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is, for me, just for today. Happy New Year.